Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. If you're new to the Hollow, welcome. We're so excited to have you and I'm excited to be doing my first blog hop with Ulta New to launch the Tropical Brush Markers. Now I have five different ways to use these brush markers, different tips, tricks, techniques that you can use in your cards. We'll be creating backgrounds and then I'll show you the finished card that I did after the video. Um, after each section. So I just want to explain it a little bit. My name is Alexandra and I'm here at Hedgehog Color. We have daily videos that tips, tricks, techniques, we have two minute tips, all sorts of fun things. So I hope you'll subscribe while you're here and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. We also have the blog, thehedgehoghollow.com as well. We also have lots of um, exclusive coupon codes and all sorts of fun things that go on here at Hedgehog Hollow. So I hope you'll stick around once you're finished with the blog hop too. So let's jump in to our first technique using these wonderful markers. Now, first of all, they're all gonna come, I've done most of mine, but they're all gonna come with these little um, neon rings on your brush markers. This is the third set from Ulta New. And so all you have to do to prime your markers is unscrew them like this, take the ring out, and screw it back on and then you're ready to go. Now this set has some really fun colors in it. Of course, with everything with Ulta New, coordinates perfectly together, cardstocks, inks, everything works beautifully. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a wet on wet background. So I'm gonna use a piece of watercolor cardstock. Everything in my videos is always linked in the video description too and it's linked in the order I use it in the video. So it's super easy to find too. I'm just gonna take a wide paintbrush, this is a pretty one that I like to use and I'm just going to use a cup of water and the reason I've used different color cups you'll see later on just to remind me. Now normally something I like to use is called the rinse well and I'll link that in the top right hand corner and what it means is when you're watercoloring you never have to worry about different um, dirty water pots or anything because I'm going to add different things to my water today and that's why I'm using different cups here. But I want to make sure my background is reasonably wet. Now another way you can do this is use a mist bottle and we'll be using that later on for one of our techniques. So I'm just going to make this, I don't want it saturated, but I also don't want it to be dry. And we're going to create a fun background. So I'm just going over it like so. Put my water off to the side because I am the person who would knock it over. And now we're going to tip all of our pens out because we're going to be using these beautiful colours. Let's see, what do I want to use? Now, I haven't used any of these pens yet, um, but what you'll notice is some of the colors have already started to come down the barrel. Let's just take off one of the lids and into my brush. Now, if I really want to get that going, all you do is just give it a squeeze and that ink's gonna start running through. And of course, you can use it just straight away off to squeeze some ink out and start going, and that's gonna work really well. So let's start with this crimson color. Now you can see, look at that, isn't that beautiful? I could just put dots down and it's going to just spider out into different areas. The other thing I can do is I can go back to that thick brush that I was using, I can load it up with some water, I can pick up some of that red and I can make a nice red stripe. Now, what do we want to gradient from red into? Let's go from red into some yellow. Let's use that fresh lemon. So again, I'm gonna squeeze some out. I'm working on the Tim Holtz glass mat, and I like this because I can squeeze some of my color out. It's also gonna make your brushes, uh, your pens last a little bit longer. Look at that beautiful background. And from that, I'm just gonna overlap into the red slightly so the two colors bleed together nicely. I'm encouraging it just with a little bit of water and that wide brush, just like so. Grab a little bit of kitchen towel to clean off my brush. This is why I would normally use the rinse well, but as I say, we're using some additions to our water today, so that's why I don't have my rinse well out. I'm going to throw in some lime, because I have a really fun card in mind. I'm gonna be using the half-tone circles to finish off this card. So again, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush, pick up some of that color, and I'm gonna add a nice stripe together. Just overlap a little bit and let the colors mingle. And then, hmm, what should we do next? We have one final color at the bottom. I've got some blues here, let's go for some turquoise. 
and I'm going to leave these colours on my palette area because we're going to be using them throughout the video and I'm sure we'll revisit these same colours. Again, I'm just going to load up my brush and I'm going to pop my finger in there. And just a little bit of overlap is just going to encourage those colours to mingle. And so you can see how they're all starting to blend beautifully together. And then I'm going to take my Ranger Heat It Tool, which is not going to move any of my ink around. All it's going to do is just dry those colours in situ. Got some beautiful blends. Now the less water you add, the more intense your colour is going to be. So if you wanted a more intense colour, you could just use less water. You'll see my cardstock is curling up a little bit, so what I'm going to do is just turn it over. That's going to help relax it out again. Now, if you end up with super curly cardstock, sometimes you can relax it just by kind of turning over in different ways. I am going to trim this down in size, so I'm not so worried about the bleed on the side. And I'm going to stamp over the top too. But what you can see is you've got a beautiful, bold, striped background that we can now stamp over. You can also flatten this out by just running it through your die cutting machine, no dies or anything like that. And then now on your screen, you can see the card that I created. I used that half tone um, circle stamp set and some other alter new sentiments and things. And then I use some of my favorite black velvet cardstock and a Nina card base on there. So everything will just be linked to the video description for you. And I've also listed on the screen there the um, supplies that I used for this particular card. But I just love, isn't that fun, kind of poppy, modern card that I created. So now we can move on to our second technique. So for a second technique, is I call it peekaboo embossing. I'm not sure if it has a formal name, but we have a perfect alter new stamp set that's gonna go with it. So I'm taking another piece of watercolor cardstock. I'm gonna take a piece of tape. Now this is I Tamiya tape. It's actually used for the Airfix models and things like that. And I'm lining it up along the bottom of my watercolor cardstock. I want to create kind of a fake horizon and I'm going to just stick that down on here. I'm also going to add a little bit of the sun-kissed color. We didn't use that last time. And Greg convinced me to get my rinse well out while I was kind of just cleaning my work area because it does just make life so much easier. So I'm kind of grateful to him. He's looking at me, why do you have to mention my name? And then when I give him some credit, he's like, yeah, that was my idea. So typical man uh, there. But what we're gonna do is just take some water. So my rinse well's over here. And as I say, I linked it up earlier in the video. It's an amazing tool because what we do is we just go in and then when my water gets dirty, I press my little plunger, it empties out and then it refills. If you're gonna watercolor, this is a must have tool. So what I do is just load this up. I'm gonna start with my yellow. This is that fresh lemon color. And I wanna go super, super light. In fact, I'm actually going to just spritz my cardstock because I want it to be really, really, really light. She says, I think my water bottle is getting low. So I'm just gonna put some really light down. I also added some of this um, sun-kissed. Again, really, really light. And I'm going to take some of the crimson, again, really light. And I only want a little bit in the background because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp over this once it's dry. So we're just kind of creating a light sunset. Now I'm going to dry this off. a little bit of kitchen towel because I don't want my edges to be too harsh so I'm just going to kind of daub my edges here I might even just daub a little bit in the middle so I want this to be a very subtle effect underneath I'm just drying off my cardstock and I want my cardstock to be super dry So normally if we were going between layers, we wouldn't worry too much about our cardstock being dry. For this one, you really do want it to be nice and bone bone dry. So I'm just giving it a nice feel because I'm gonna be using embossing powder. So we're gonna use our anti-static tool. 
I'm going to give it a nice pounce because if there's any excess liquid we want this to stick to it, not our embossing powder. That feels good to me. And I'm going to take the Gradient Sunset stamp set from Altenew and we're using this sunset down here. So I'm going to grab that out of its packaging and I'm going to grab the sunset. And so this is how I'm going to do it because I want this perfect... Um, set of stripes. So this is how I do it. So I fold this back. I'm going to grab a acrylic block that's a little bit larger and I'm going to pop that on top of my stamp set just like this so that it is stick, sticks. So this is the solid side that you want stuck to your acrylic block and then I'm going to flip this over. In fact, I'm just going to move this just slightly first. I'm going to move it a little bit more centered onto my acrylic block. So you want it where you want it. And then you're just going to kind of peel your stamp away just like this. And now your stamp is positioned on here exactly how it's positioned on your acrylic piece. So that's my little top tip. This one has just moved slightly, but now I have that perfect spacing, so that worked really, really well. So that's how um, I am now a perfectionist, so I see like the tiny little thing that's wrong. But that gives me that perfect spacing in there. So what I'm going to do is just ink it up just a little bit, and then I'm going to stamp out on here. And I'm going to line it up with my taped horizon, just like so. Of course you could do this in your Misty, but because I happen to have had it taped down, I'm just going to do it like this. Give a nice firm press. And I hope we got our sunset on there nicely. And then I'm going to lift this piece up and I'm going to add my embossing powder. This is Crystal Clear Ultra New Embossing Powder. I have used it before, but I do keep that kind of seal just in my lid. Just like that. And I am generous with my embossing powder. I'm going to just fold this little tab under so my embossing powder doesn't stick to it. And then I'm just going to fold this in half and tip it back into my container. Create my little funnel. Super easy. Just like that. Now it's a little bit harder to see on the video, but all I'm going to do is just heat emboss this and then we'll come back and add our next layer on. So I've dried my heat embossing, so it's clear, so you can't see where that heat embossing is on camera, it's a bit harder to see, but I can see where it's glossy. And what that's done is it's locked in that lighter shade of watercolour, which is a really fun technique, and it works better with a more solid stamp. You can do it with a, a line stamp, but you'll find you'll get a much better effect with a solid stamp. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back in and add our rest of our sunset. So again, I'm going to start with my lightest shade at the bottom, but I want it to be more intense. And then we're going to move up towards those reds. So I'm going to add a little bit more pigment to the side in my palette area. And this is one of my favorite ways to use my watercolor pens because you're going to find they last you a lot longer using this technique. And hey, we all like to use like our uh, products to last us as long as possible. I am going to show you using direct to paper techniques with them as well. I'm going to get clean water out of my rinse well and I'm going to spritz my paper again lightly because I don't want a particularly light um, technique for this. I want it to be a little bit darker but I'm going to start with my lightest colour and my wide brush. I'm going to overlap my tape a little bit. I'm going to grab water. And it will bead up on top of your embossing. That's what it's going to do. So don't worry, that is going to happen. And then I'm going to go in with our red. You might need to just dampen off a little bit of your water. But watercolours are just so much fun to work with.
and as I say I've created this invisible horizon down the bottom here which I'm now going to take my tape off because I want to create a little bit of a fun effect so I can throw that tape away. I'm also going to introduce just a little bit of green because I'll be stamping something down here later. Again, I'll clean. See, isn't this neat how I can just create clean water whenever I need it? It goes into the reservoir in the bottom. It also has little grooves in here which really make sure my brush comes out nice and clean. And these big brushes hold a lot of ink in them too. So I'm really making sure I've got a nice clean brush because I don't want mud. And you can get extra canisters too, so if you're going to a crop and things and you want to make sure you stock up on water, you can do that as well. I'm just kind of giving a hint that there's something below my horizon. And then I'm going to take a clean piece of kitchen towel and I'm going to mop off of my embossing. Clean out my brush. And I really love this red, I think it's beautiful. Get a bit more orange. And again, if you need to, green white your paper, add more ink. This also gives you more control over the amount of ink, the amount of water. I'm really going for that desert sunset effect. And of course, by just leaving it on my palette area, I can just go back as many times as I need to. But that's kind of my finished sunset, which I absolutely adore. So you can see, and I'm gonna leave this one now to dry. And you can see on your screen now how that card looks now that it's turned out. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful card? Really kind of, you can see how that sunset's turned out, how it looks like there's something underneath with the palm trees, a real summer vibes considering we're in the middle still of winter. We've got snow here in Ohio, um, but I absolutely adore how it turns out. As I say, you can check out all the links in the description and there is a blog post that goes with it that tells you how I assembled each card together too. So check that out as well. Um, and let's move on to technique number three. So for this third technique, we're actually gonna add something to our water to give us something a little bit different. And so I'm gonna be adding salt to my water. So I have a little water cup here. I'm gonna be adding some salt. So this is around about um, a teaspoon of salt that I have in my little pot here, just regular table salt, nothing special. And I'm gonna stir it up. And we're gonna add this as our wash in the background. So I'm just going to do the same as we did on that first technique, just add that like so again you don't want it too saturated but you want it enough that your paint's going to react with it we're going to have a pretty background and my intention is to stamp the leaf medallion over it but let's see what we create first of all make sure that you then wash your brushes and everything first i've already squeezed out paint onto this side of my palette of the two greens and the two blues in this set. And what you're gonna notice is this is going to react very differently to how it reacted with the original spiders. So the salt really gives you a more kind of, you know, controlled spider. It's a very kind of different effect just by adding that salt. And really play with additives. You add bleach into it, you're gonna get a different effect. Add a wash and then put um, isopropyl alcohol onto your um, paintbrush and you can go in and remove color. That's also a really fun technique to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place dots everywhere until they start to merge together because that's the effect I want to create in the background. But I want it to be that they spider together 
you can see here I'm just kind of pulling this paint out but I'm very much doing it in a dotty fashion because I want a bokka type background to add some water to this dark one because it's incredibly dark So, and the other thing you can do is if you add more water, you're going to get a lighter colour. I'm going to go for more greens. And so you can use this as a background paper. You can use it to stamp on top of. I'm also now going to start dipping my paintbrush into that salty water, which will give me a different reaction again. I'm going to take some kitchen towel. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up some of this puddle um, the reason being that it's putting a lot of colour down to that spot but can you see how it's blending together I'm really liking the background paper so it's really fun to create your own background papers and some of these watercolour techniques that we're sharing with you and these different ways to use the tools that you have in your craft room and these new release tools from Altenew really fun ways to create these. As I say, the reason I'm sticking with this is because over the top of this I want to use that beautiful leaf medallion set that I've had sitting in my craft room for so long. I've been desperate to find just the right background to use it with and I think this is going to be absolutely perfect. I'm just dotting in some colour. You may hear my girls playing in the background they're out there with a friend of ours who comes to watch them while we're videoing. I think they're playing Twister. If you find your paper gets too dry, you can always just go back in and you can add a refresh. You'll also get different techniques. You see how I can pull the colours together. Oh, that's pretty too. And then I can also go over the top and I can get new spiders to come together. So I really love experimenting. I say bleach is a good one, um, putting colour down and then adding spots of isopropyl alcohol. Um, you can also do fun things with rice. You could make a background and then you can throw big granules of salt like the Himalayan pink salt, rock salt, sea salt, those kinds of things. They also create beautiful backgrounds. Okay, so I'm going to kind of leave a couple of areas. And the other thing is, you have to kind of know when to leave it. I'm really loving how this one's turning out. The only thing I don't want to have is any harsh line, so I'll just make sure that I add water anywhere I'm ending up with a harsh line, and I don't want any white space in this one, so I'll make sure I don't end up with any of that. But I do love how I've turned out this background. And you can also make sure you don't get any puddles, but this one is turning out beautifully. you can see here how all those colours have mottled together and the salt has caused some different reactions to occur within the paint. So you've got different veins and different reactions from adding the salt and that's why I wouldn't recommend using the brushes from the paint directly onto the salt because it can affect your brushes over time. If you just pop it onto a palette and use it separately and then give your brushes a really good wash afterwards. I'm going to hold this up so it doesn't touch any of the paint that's on the um, surface.
so that's my finished background panel absolutely beautiful you can see there really reminds me of different marbled effects on there so that's my finished panel and now you can see on your screen how that finished card came out um, I absolutely love how that kind of just makes that beautiful background paper and I love making my own papers. I buy tons of pattern papers too, but sometimes it's just fun to create your own backgrounds. And of course you could die cut these papers that you create as well. Full list is there on your screen and in the video description and of course in the blog post as well. So I hope you'll hop over and check that out. But now the next two techniques really do complement each other well. So let's work on those. We're gonna be working directly with the pens themselves. So for this one, we could be working with the pens directly. And again, we could be doing that wet on wet technique. So what does wet on wet do versus wet on dry? Well, wet on dry um, is using the pen directly onto your watercolor cardstock. And for this one, this is a quick and easy card. You can use it for any occasion. It's a great technique to go to. I've already heat embossed using the black uh, embossing powder, the inked Flora Alter New Stamp just in the corner here beautiful it's really quick and simple and it always looks gorgeous the gold also looks great you can use copper so many different colors we just pop our piece in here and if i was to use my um, pen here i'll show you i'm going to grab what color should we do this flower in i'm going to do it in those two blues because i think they looked really pretty in the last one so if i took the um blue and it's called turquoise and desert night so if I just took the blue directly and I just color on here the color doesn't spread it doesn't go anywhere outside of where I put it whereas if I make my cardstock wet you can see already that ink is traveling to anywhere there's water watercolor will react with water and it's going to pull out to anywhere that there's already water so you can see it instantly spiders. And the one thing that's great about that part of it is if you're um, an inexperienced colorist or you want to color super quickly like this, you can see I'm instantly getting light and dark into my image. I'm getting veining. I have to do zero work because the water that I just put down using a spritz. And that's another reason I'm gonna heat emboss because it gives my image um, some walls they're only thin walls but it means that my ink is staying within my design it's not going outside of those walls because um, the embossing powder holds it in so this is a really great beginner technique it's a really great oh i need to make 15 of those cards techniques but you can see very quickly very easily i've colored in an image that has lights and darks so i could now just leave that my image is kind of colored for me just by spritzing. And if I wanted to put more spritz in, I could get different lights and darks. And just by kind of touching in my pen, the watercolor will do all of that work for me, which is one thing that's really great about the wet on wet technique. And then I could very easily take my darker blue and I could just touch in some areas that I wanted that dark. And again, the water is going to do the work for me. It's going to blend seamlessly. I don't have to do any work really. I just do some light touches. It picks up a little bit of that darker color. I mean, how simple is that? Yes, I can absolutely go in with dry brushes. I can add extra color, I can do more advanced techniques, but if you are looking for that quick and simple card, that is how you do it. If I needed to make 20 thank you cards, this is how I'm going to do it. Because, look how easy that is. If I want more of that dark color, I'm just a little bit more aggressive. If I don't want as much of that dark color, I'm gonna take a little bit of kitchen towel I'm going to turn it into a point and then I'm just going to dab in and I can absorb some of that color up. And you can see how quickly I can lighten up some of that image, but doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous? So here I might want a little bit more. So again, I can just tap my pen in.
And then I'm just gonna grab my Ranger Heat It tool. I'm gonna give that a quick dry. Because one thing I like to do on my images, um, you can absolutely, I could just leave this and then I could stamp my sentiment around here, mount it on a panel and I'm done. But one thing I like to do, and I've just noticed a little white area that I want to fill in over here and over here, is I like to create just a little bit of something so it looks like my flower isn't floating in midair on my card. So what I want to do is I'm gonna just give this a nice dry because I don't want too much water on my project all at once. And you can see as it's drying, then lots of texture in there. Now that looks like I spent a lot of time adding texture, adding color, adding depth, and all those things and you saw that probably took me 45 seconds to color if that a minute maybe and it looks amazing it looks like I am a pro watercolorist and I can assure you I might be pretty good with my Copics I might be pretty good with my old new artist markers watercolors not my bag but I have learned some techniques that make me look like I can do some good watercoloring and this is one of them and these watercolor pens are going to make you look like you're an amazing colorist too. So that's the kind of start of my flower and I think that looks pretty awesome. Now the next thing you're going to do is take a clean water pot like this one and you're going to take a reasonably sized brush like so. My very well loved brushes over here what you're going to do is just put a little bit of water around the edge of your image just like this so I'm just going around the edge of my image like so and I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of this purple wine because that just sounds like a very pretty colour And I'm going to add a lot of water to this because I want it to be super, super light. And now, even more. I am just adding the tiniest wash. I'm going to lighten it even more. This is too dark for me. And you might be like, well, I can barely see that. Well, that's too dark. So I'm going to add lots and lots of water. I'm going to grab myself some kitchen towel. And I'm going to avoid my flower as much as possible. And you can do this as many times as you want to, to pull out as much colour as you want to. And even once this is completely dry, which I'm going to do now, so I can go back in with my heat it tool. So even when I go to mount this card up, if I decided that that pink was too pink, I could go in with more water, I could lighten it up as many times as I want to. And that is the great thing about watercolor. Nothing is set in stone, you can always alter it. Super, super easy techniques. And this is gonna look amazing on your card. So you can now see on your screen how once I've dried this and once I've, um, gone in a few more times on the pink because I, I'm i not happy with the pink as I'm looking at it now and I know by the time you see the finished card that that's how it's going to look. You can see the finished card, isn't it absolutely beautiful though and so easy to colour. Um, love this technique and that inked floor is just an absolutely beautiful flower on there as well. So you can see how to create that card, you can see all the supplies I use, this very quick and simple, very elegant sentiment out of that inked floor uh, stamp set as well and um, super, super easy. So I hope you love this card as well. Now I'm just going to show you how to do that same technique in reverse 
Um, so you can just fill in your white space rather than your flowers themselves. So for our final technique, I'm gonna be doing the opposite of what we just did. So I've already prepared my piece. This is what it looks like. I used the Adore You stamp set and to create it was really, really easy. I just took my Misty. I arranged all of my stamps inside just like this. And I stamped them with the Ulta New Embossing Ink, used my black embossing powder and just stamped them onto my panel. So it was really, really easy. And I could stamp this as many times as I wanted to create pretty panels like this. And then all I have to do at the end is add on a sentiment. So rather than coloring in the flowers themselves, we're gonna color in the white space. So we're gonna have very crisp, clean and simple flowers. Again, I'm like working with the wet on wet technique just because of the way it functions together. And I think for this one, let's do the, um, let's do sun kissed and yellow because I think that looked really nice when we did that earlier. So I'm going to start off with my yellows. So again, I'm going to do that same technique. I want to pay attention to the edges of my leaves a little bit. And so I'm just going in with that fresh lemon, adding color all around. And the water is pulling out the color nicely. If I want to, I could squeeze and add more color, but at this point, I'm just gonna go with what's there and see how we get on. We are just a little blob there. It's plenty. Remember, you can always add more color. It's a little bit harder to get rid of it, but we did it in the last one. We got rid of some of that pink. You can add water and you can mop it up. Now we're gonna go in with our sun kissed. Let's outline this leaf. I'm gonna go right into this corner down here. Outline this flower. And then I'm gonna outline this leaf and I'm gonna blend the lemon and the yellow. And I've got quite a bright lemon there so I'm gonna squeeze out some of the sun kissed. I think I'm also going to just do a little spritz of water in that direction too. I did get a little bit in the flower, but I'm not worried because it's going to be organic. And hey, we have a sentiment. Sentiments are there to cover up mistakes. Remember that. No mistake can't be covered. The other thing to remember with watercolour, and this is a really great tip, is if you take a magic eraser, cut off just a little tiny corner, at the end of your piece, if you have anything too major, dip that magic eraser into water. And then all you have to do is, once you've dipped it into water, just go onto your piece and you can usually erase little tiny mistakes like that. And it works really, really well. Um, I found that in a video once on YouTube and trust me, I've used it more than once. Lots of top tips and videos here at Hedgehog Hollow. And I do all sorts of two minute tips. So you can find that playlist on the channel. So I'm just outlining around the flowers. I'm a little more careful when I get to the edges of a flower or a leaf. And then in between, I just kind of go for it. Some areas is more yellow, some areas is more orange. And then I'm just filling in between I'm normally a pink person, but I have to say, if you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll notice I've really been going for the oranges and the yellows. So I'm just, again, filling in. Little spritz of water over here. Of course, you could also just use a water brush too. Altenew do a great one that goes with their pan watercolors. And I'm just switching between the two colors as well. And you're not gonna contaminate the two colors. So don't worry about that either. Lovely how this looks. And 
and you'll notice the two colours will blend nicely again. That's the wet on wet technique. That's what's going to make the two colours blend together because the water will just naturally blend them. And you could colour in the flowers as well. This is just a technique for using white space in your favour, making it super, super simple. And just making sure we filled in every area. And what you'll see when you see the close up photos in a second, you'll see I made some mistakes. Some of the flowers have some colour in. I'm not worrying about it because it's watercolour, it's supposed to kind of look a little bit organic, I've got lights, I've got darks, but I kind of also have some of those fiery shades in there too, and I think this looks really, really pretty. I love how this comes out, and you can now see on your screen as well that finished card, you can see how just a simple, clean, elegant framing, that fun sentiment on there just makes a beautiful card, and how easy was that too? So you've now seen five different cards, um, on different ways to use those watercolour pens. Don't forget to go and check out all the other stops here on the hop too. I hope you've enjoyed the five different ideas I've given you. The girls have other fab ideas, I'm sure. I can't wait to do the hop with you as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. I hope you'll stop back here tomorrow for more inspiration at Hedgehog Hollow as well. We have lots of fun things planned for you. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Check out all the links in the video description too. And don't forget to sign up for the Hedgehog Hollow Friday newsletter full of crafty sales, exclusive coupon codes just for Hedgehog Hollow followers. We always have some of those for you and also lots of things going on here at Hedgehog Hollow. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Happy stamping. Bye.